If you were a very, very good driver and if you were prepared to concentrate absolutely, the 911 could reward like no other car on the road. But if you lost concentration even for a second, it would fling you into the hedge. The 911 built up a fearsome reputation as a giant killer, but that didn't stop brave, talented and rich men forming queues to buy one. They knew the engine was slung out at the back there, way behind the rear axle, waiting to act like a giant pendulum. But they didn't mind risking making the ultimate sacrifice in pursuit of the ultimate reward. They wanted to try and tame the 911. Three little numbers which could strike as much fear into the heart of mortal man as 666. If this car had a name, it would be Damien. Me? I used to look forward to driving a 911 with the same sort of relish that I looked forward to getting into bed at night with a tarantula. But that was then. This is now. Woohoo! In 1989, Porsche introduced this car, the Carrera 4, so-called because it has four-wheel drive. Now that enabled Porsche to go out into the big wide world and convince everyone that the 911's tricky tail had been tamed. Whether it actually had or not is a different matter, but either way, Porsche's showrooms suddenly found themselves playing host to a new breed of butterfingered customers. Porsche made strenuous denials that they were the finest purveyors of automobiles to the yuppie classes, but behind the scenes they were bending over backwards to woo the guys in the red braces. They had the wonderful cabrio here, but perhaps more importantly was the so-called Tiptronic gearbox. Yuppie man could now charge hither and thither with a telephone permanently fastened to his right ear because this is basically a 911 with an automatic gearbox. The enthusiasts were horrified. But it was no ordinary automatic gearbox. I mean, you could use it like one, put it in D in town and just poodle around. Or on the open road, you move the lever over here and then you've got something like a bike gearbox. You pull the lever toward you, third, second, wow. And then simply move it away, second, third, fourth. You have manual control. Me though, I just leave it in D all the time and poodle around, eating cheese, taking in some rays listening to the cackle of that wonderful air-cooled six-cylinder engine. And besides, if you drive slowly, you can still hear your mobile phone ringing. The dash, though, is a mess. You really can tell the car's 30 years old from where I'm sitting. You can't see any of the dials except for the large, centrally placed rev counter, and all the knobs look like boiled sweets. But the yuppies loved it. They thought it was what the serious driver wanted. They could take their Alice banded girlfriends out for a spin and pretend that they were the kind of person who'd made the 911 notorious in the first place. Unfortunately, the real enthusiasts stopped buying 911s because they didn't want people to think they were yuppies. That would have been just fine if the yuppie breed had lasted. But as the recession began to bite, city boys on the red eye took a hit and the flash cash was gone. So too was the 911's principal customer base. So they need the enthusiasts back. And now, as Tiff has been finding out, they might just have the car to do it. Interesting, all that stuff about yuppies that stuff about yuppies. Mind you, spoken by an expert on the subject, Kings Road Clarkson himself. However, he does have a point. If Porsche to win back those true driving enthusiasts, they need a serious car to seriously impress. And this is it, the very latest 911 Turbo. Not my choice of colour, perhaps, but that doesn't detract from these classic 911 lines. There's the distinctive turbo hallmarks of the whale tail and those huge wheel arch extensions. 
New 18-inch rims house drill discs and four-pot aluminium calipers. The Laces Turbo uses the same 3.6-litre engine as the Carrera 2 and 4, but with 0.9 bar of boost from the turbocharger, the output is pushed up from their 250 to 360 horsepower, and that's over 10% up on the old turbo model. With the best will in the world, you can't really stretch its legs on the public roads. In such cases, we normally go to a racetrack. But for the 911, Millbrook Proving Ground in Bedfordshire seemed like a better bet. Not only can you go flat out on the banked bowl and the mile straight, there's the handling and the hill circuits to offer every type of corner and gradient to test the car's performance. Of course, the first question everyone asks is, how fast? Let's find out. The banked circuit at Millbrook is a perfect circle, two miles round. You can actually drive in the top lane at a steady 100 miles an hour with your hands off the wheel as the banking steers you around. Over 100 and you need to hang on tight and hold the car away from the barriers. At high speeds you feel every little bump as the car sits down on its suspension. The Porsche Speedo showed a flat out 175 miles an hour. Second question, 0 to 60. Hold on. Well, if you're prepared to burn a lot of expensive rubber and be brutal with the clutch and gearbox, it'll do it in 4.7 seconds. But really, that sort of behaviour is best left for the racetrack. Now, the third question, which people never seem to ask, is how quickly does it stop? I'll show you. We're doing 30 miles an hour. If I hit the brakes, it stops. In fact, it stopped in just 27 feet. And at 70 miles an hour, it was even more impressive. Just under 100 feet, way short of the highway code's 245. So it goes fast and stops quickly. But how does the 911 cope with the country lanes? The country lanes at Millbrook are glorious, twisting, almost alpine roads, which despite their centre-line markings are one way, so I could test the 911 in complete safety. Now, it wasn't just the four-wheel drive that improved the 911's handling, because the new Carreras also featured substantially modified chassis and suspension that made the rear-wheel drive Carrera 2 just as sure-footed as the four. But then you ask it to cope with another 110 horsepower. No problem. Now, while the latest Carrera 4 does help save Jeremy from ending up in the ditch, you can never get away from the fact that the 911 has most of its weight in the tail. Normally, that means if you power into a corner too fast and lift off the throttle, the back swings out. It may still be true in the wet, but in the dry, I couldn't get it to go. On the other hand, break the traction with brute horsepower and you can get a glorious tail-out power slide. With my research finished for the day, I took the 911 Turbo onto the handling circuit for some exhilarating high-speed motoring. The new chassis and now the new engine have seen the Turbo evolve yet again into an even better, even safer machine that provides real driver satisfaction. Of course, if you try too hard, things can get very dramatic. It's hard work filming for Top Gear. Ooh.